The Lord of the Rings movies opens with an amazing scene. The forces of elves and men have formed an alliance and marched to battle against Sauron. Isildur cuts the ring off Sauron's hand and the ring is lost in the wilderness. But what's the backstory? Where did the elves and men and Sauron come from? And who are these guys? A lot of that story is told in a previous video of mine, but it's mostly concerned with the first age of Middle-earth. I didn't say much about the second and third ages. So, here they are. The second and third ages of Middle-earth. After the big war, many elves went back to Valinor, but some stayed. Those that stayed built a couple new cities. Moria still existed, and so did cities that the Elves of Darkness built a long time ago. A bunch of men had helped the Valar fight Morgoth, and, as a reward, the Valar gave them wisdom, long life, and a beautiful island called Numenor. By the way, these are Aragorn's ancestors. Then a new Dark Lord rose named Sauron. He had been a lieutenant for Morgoth during all those ancient wars and eventually built his own kingdom, intending to conquer Middle-earth. He created a powerful ring that increased his power. He also tied his soul into it. As long as the ring existed, so would he. Sauron unleashed his army and destroyed one of the elven cities. But the elves and dwarves didn't like that very much and drove him back. The Numenorians helped as well. This was the first defeat of Sauron. The elves built a new city a little farther north. And that's how it was for about 1500 years. Then the Numenorians thought that they should probably take care of Sauron. So they came to Middle-earth, defeated him, and took him as prisoner. This was the second defeat of Sauron. But Sauron was really smart and really good at talking people into things. He also secretly kept his powerful ring. He convinced the Numenorians that the Valar were evil, and so they rebelled and sailed west to conquer Valinor. But some Numenorians didn't think that was such a good idea and went back to Middle-earth. Then the big god Iluvatar stepped in. He destroyed the ships and the island of Numenor. The Numenorians that went back to Middle-earth built a couple new kingdoms, one in the north and another in the south. But Sauron had survived the destruction of Numenor and went back to Middle-earth, and everyone was pretty uncomfortable about that. So they joined forces and killed him and took the One Ring. This was the last alliance of elves and men shown in the opening scene of the Lord of the Rings movies. But the humans weren't very responsible with the ring, and it was lost in the wilderness. Let's talk about these two kingdoms. The one in the north was called Arnor. The one in the south was called Gondor. Gondor was a pretty stable kingdom, but Arnor had a bunch of problems. This was the kingdom ruled by Elendil. After many generations of kings, one of them died and left three sons. The sons couldn't decide who should inherit the throne and separated into three kingdoms. They didn't like each other very much and fought a lot. Then Sauron came back again. He started rebuilding his forces and, in the meantime, sent the Witch King to fight the three northern kingdoms. Sauron thought that they were weak enough to be easily conquered. And he was right. The Witch King destroyed everything. But some of the royalty of Arnor survived and escaped to Rivendell. That's where they lived for many generations. The dwarves had some problems as well. One of the Balrogs of Morgoth had survived throughout all these ages and lived deep below the earth. The dwarves bumped into him while mining and were slightly overpowered. They left Moria and relocated. They had some problems with a dragon, but they took care of that. This whole time, Sauron is still looking for his powerful ring. Turns out, a hobbit found it. No one really knew who they were or where they came from, but one of them possessed the most powerful object in Middle-earth. It was brought to Rivendell, and the people there made a plan to destroy the ring. But it could only be destroyed where it was made, and that was where Sauron lived. So, while Gondor was fighting Sauron, and the dwarves were fighting the Easterlings, one of the hobbits, named Frodo, sneaked into Sauron's homeland. He destroyed the ring by casting it into a volcano. And since Sauron had tied his soul into the ring, this meant that Sauron was destroyed as well. And this time, it was for good. Everyone celebrated. Then one of the royal line of Arnor became king of Gondor. His name was Aragorn. Gondor's line of kings had died out a long time ago, and Aragorn was the next best thing. The Noldor and Sindar elves finally decided that Middle-earth wasn't such a great place and went back to Valinor. Aragorn lived for a long time and brought Gondor into a new and glorious age. And that's it. That's the story of the Second and Third Ages of Middle-earth 
and the dawn of the fourth 